गुड इवनिंग इंद्रमणी गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग थैंक यू केशवर साहब वेलकम सर यू आर वेलकम a great well at least we are able to beat like this we track this actually डॉक्टर सैयद दिस मॉर्निंग एन के त्यागी कार्ड में सो ही ही हैज बीन वेरी सीनियर एग्रीकल्चर इंजीनियर एंड ही ही वाज चेयरमैन एग्रीकल्चर साइंटिस्ट रिक्रूटमेंट बोर्ड मेंबर डायरेक्टर हाँ सो ही इज अनदर एक्सपर्ट हु वाटर एंड एनर्जी नेक्सस ही कीप्स ऑन टॉकिंग एंड हैज वर्क एक्सटेंसिवली so the national uh, academy of agricultural sciences uh, they are doing their uh, uh, you know biennial uh, this uh, annual uh, meeting uh, in february <laughs> february 2021 and energy is uh, main theme yeah so we, they are looking for uh, you know there should be good speakers and theme mm. and sub theme so that uh, energy aspect of agriculture we can emphasize there among the agriculturist uh, you know okay. so yeah. we'll discuss we will discuss uh, this uh, issue okay. mm. sometime later and uh, we'll okay. find out he is interested that uh, people from industry particularly uh, you know up to uh, including uh, fertilizer industry if they can give a energy scenario of fertilizer production So I was just discussing with him that uh, if you are mm. making drilled urea, I am you are making uh, the, uh, liquid urea, then what would be mm. the energy gaps mm. and all those things, no? So mm. we have to discuss, uh, and uh, then we can uh, suggest them that uh, mm. who are the good uh, people who can speak during that uh, uh, conference of academy. Right. Again, uh, yeah. BHU. Yeah. 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 And Idramani, uh, he was there already. Now he is not there. Yeah. I don't see him. 
in the beginning he was there he, he will come uh, he will join uh, i think uh, he joined before and now he is uh, he will join he will join <clears throat> i think we will pick up some speed in the meantime yeah. others are joining yeah, i will yeah. uh, I, i will tell you some story till now at least yeah. okay i will um, today is uh, friends good evening uh, we'll take another 5 uh, minutes to start probably because we're waiting for some more people to join in the meantime i would like to brief you today is we are completing two months of starting this uh, webinar series so uh, i would like to just uh, put for you something uh, setu Setu, can you put the slide? You can hear me. So I will do that. Okay. Now he has got. Uh, you see, today is the uh, second month. We started actually the. webinar one series basically to train the people in embedded electronics in agriculture agriculture very less electronics is used till today in india especially so that was the objective and we had 18 speakers uh, in the webinar one and we had 10 training sessions on starting from basic electronics sensors networking communication all those theories Uh, there was tremendous response we have we had speakers from throughout the world we had from us we had from bangkok different places the speakers talking about ai as well as the robotics uh, automatic pickers all the all uh, different different interesting and uh, for example drones so we had a lot of interesting topics then we learned how we have to learn, we have to improve our skills in automation and electronics So how we learn to communicate between uh, the techie people as well as these uh, the engineers others behind. So that is very successful. Based on that, we started webinar two exactly one month afterwards, May twentieth. We started, and in that we look for the uh, how to implement this whatever we had. So we can have training for the trainers. So that is still not not yet started actually because of this COVID. Uh, but we are already working on it to make a black box to uh, help the researchers as well as the industry to fight between the sensors and communication problems in agriculture sector that we are working on then we formulated tag tag group many of you if you know the tag group is a technology application group which the experts discussing on different topics and try to present a white paper on it as well as follow it up to see that actually what all the today the practices what all we use nagrik the practices what type of interventions we can do and to suggest in that we had actually started webinar two on themes basis we had uh, on bioenergy we covered several speakers i think around four speakers we have covered and bioenergy even though we find it's uh, not uh, uh, very much utilized till now in india but it's very important for india Uh, especially in terms of waste treatment and uh, we have also had a theme about solar energy so in that especially on solar water pumping and then we also had a few on protected cultivation that is the vertical farming polyhouses you see all these three bioenergy solar energy as well as polyhouses have something in common they are all subsidy products so uh, we try to find out actually where where is stuck up and what is the how we can improve this because this is the first time probably all the experts in agriculture engineer on one platform we are getting together to approach a particular problem and uh, we have made already uh, two tag presentations one on bioenergy as well as solar energy we expect probably in a week's time we'll be able to submit the white papers publicly as well as to do some intervention and we also had a bit on logistics and agri marketing now i'll give you in short next slide please few minutes i will say to yeah i i will just tell you it's a, my opinion i come back again because it's uh, two months over 
let us go back to uh, the basic, re my opinion, what I feel is education research institutions in India, less than one person want to go for entrepreneurship. I myself have visited several universities and given lectures to students, three, 400. Hardly a couple of them raise their hand, they want to be entrepreneurship. Number two, there is, I don't find, compared to Europe, where I lived, or US, I don't find significant cooperation between industries and the educational research institutions in India. This is some area we really lacking. Uh, we say, everybody tells me, yes, we are doing, we are doing, but not to the extent our intelligence can be used because our people are there everywhere in the world running uh, the whole industry. Where and why not in India? For example, uh, we don't have uh, exchange of CEOs and uh, professors at sabbatical five years, like in Europe, very common. I don't find a, a professor of a in, uh, university going to industry, let's say like cafe or whatever it is to manage it. Uh, I don't find very common in India. Less interest in working on pharmacy issues comparatively, these are relative terms. And, and uh, actually the problem is again, I find is the numbers publication, the people promotion is based on number publication. Many people ask me, sir, will you give me a certification seminar for this seminar? So it, it becomes a uh, hard for me actually. The question is, uh, is, this is because they say also, this is used for again, uh, our promotion. And uh, actually no accountability in the project. These are some of the reasons. And industries, there's also not enough focus on exports. I don't find Indian industries according to what it should do is very less exports. And uh, uh, they are, for example, rollover uh, protection. When you talk about this year is supposed to come, we are talking about 15, 20 years. We are talking about canvas, which they say this year will come. So industry is not up to the market has to come and not enough creativity of adherence to certain standards. Many of the parts should come now. Subsidies is another one of the points we have to see, uh, which actually was introduced to help the manufacturing. But I think we have to see what is going to go wrong and how we can improve it better to help uh, the society as a whole. Then technology adaptation, we have a problem. This I will talk in the next after the first talk is over. I think I covered up, everybody has joined almost. Uh, thank you for the patiently waiting for the two months over. And I would ask Dr. Indramani to introduce the uh, first speaker who is a very distinguished speaker, TRK7. Thank you, Dr. Sayed. Yeah. We have friends today, uh, Mr. TR case one, a big name. K7. So seventh K seven, level of yeah. knowledge. Seventh level of knowledge. Gyan ka satwa asman. Sir, you can speak English, Hindi, but you can speak English. He is better known as, and uh, he is basically a management guru. Management professional with over 40 years of uh, national and international experience in both functional and management areas. His domain experience covers agriculture, construction and mining, oil tools and material handling. He actively participates and continues as a governing council member of industrial and government associations. Speaker and mentor in national and international fora Kason has a track record of 30 years in area of agriculture productivity and management, government, industry, interface, and public-private partnership. He has made uh, several presentations and addressed professional gathering in across the globe. Kason is able also an ex external faculty for leading management schools. Currently, he is the group president Corporate Relations and Alliances, Type Limited, the world's third largest tractor manufacturers and India's largest exporter of tractors with a large portfolio of agricultural products and equipment consisting of Masu Ferguson and ICER brand of tractors, agricultural implements and equipment and engines in both Indian and overseas markets. He represents Type in various industry bodies and government committees. He had a distinguished academic career, winning the Banco Award and gold medal in his graduate studies in engineering from the University of Madras and went on uh, to be the first in the university and gold medalist in his management studies at the University of Bombay. He completed the sandwich course uh, by University of Michigan. 
Keswan spends his spare time mentoring students. He is additionally a prolific speaker and teacher in management and marketing and lecturer at leading academic and training institution. A master of like heading, he also uh, travels in spirituality, painting, writing, and carpentry, and whatnot. My dear friends, Mr. Keswan uh, has at present 19 positions. No, and those 19 positions either as a chairman or a member of different organization, and that includes president of Tractor and Mechanization Association, TMA, chairman National Committee on Agriculture of FICI, and chairman Vision Group Agriculture Implements Department of Industries and Commerce, Karnataka, and many. There are 19. I don't want to list that. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Keswan, for finding time for us. And uh, we are expecting a tractor man is going to speak on agriculture and farmer, and he will connect. And I have been interacting with him at different occasions and many a times. And every time I learn something, you know, from you, Mr. Case One, and uh, we try to. Our effort has been to to connect this trio, uh, that's this three three pillars of mechanization, that is industry, institution, and farmers. So, so we will see that how Mr. Case One's viewpoint on this and uh, a future, uh, what should be the path. And remember, Mr. Case One is our fellow. And he has been a very good friend of ISAE. It was his effort that we could establish a Taipei, ISAE Taipei gold medal with a very generous uh, contribution from Taipei, rupees 10 lakh meter say, that is a year. And yeah. you know, that is that is, you know, this is the biggest yeah. contribution <laughs> that we have got. Thank you very much, Mr. Keswan. Thank you. See, thanks to Lock Doctor in Germany. Actually, I think uh, I should say that I'm extremely <laughs> privileged to talk uh, in front of an audience like this, uh, especially ISAE fellows, fellows, members, and everyone connected with Indian agriculture. See, in fact, uh, <clears throat> when Dr. Syed started and he talked about uh, AI robotics and drones, and I just wanted to quickly touch upon, because I think it may not be relevant to talk now. See, there is a lot of work being done by startups in India who are done exceptionally well in these areas. So I, my request to ISAE will be, maybe the next seminar you should really look at bringing all the startups and make a small presentation, sure. make a longer okay. seminar. Okay. Yeah. It can also be a virtual seminar. And uh, do at least uh, half a day and get some of the best in India to give you what they are doing. Because you will be really surprised. Even I am surprised when I saw some of the work done by them. is as good as the work done by people abroad, but at much, much lower cost. I think that's what is relevant for India. I'm going to stop there as yeah. far as yeah. the technology is concerned. See, for me, uh, see, I've been in this area of... Uh, Farming, believe it or not, from 73, because I started my career in a joint venture of Caterpillar. And that is the time, I don't know how many people you realize that there used to be command area development. And this command area development, the tractors used were the doses, because there's a large acreages. And uh, that from that point, I had one way or the other got into agriculture. For me, the farmer, unless the farmer benefits, I don't think that uh, we as a country will benefit. See, this is the fundamental uh, thought in which I'm going to talk today. Uh, what I'm telling is not just a lecture. I think this is something I genuinely believe as an individual. We genuinely also believe this as an industry. I mean, I'm talking about that, I'm not talking about it. So some of these things, what I'm going to talk to you are the conviction. And I also believe that there can be extremely good interventions in the government and also in the industry to make this happen. So let me start from the basic farmer. See, for me, what the farmer can earn is only that he can keep. In other words, if today at the farm gate he's able to sell something at 100 rupees and this cost of manufacturing or producing it is uh, 60 rupees, he effectively he earns only 40. 
and that's all what he can anticipate. See, I don't believe in this MRP, MSPs, and what can happen to the market. It's all it has to come later. Now, the first question here is, how is that I cut down the cost to the farmer? Now, when I talk about the cost to the farmer, I talk about seeds, fertilizers, pesticide, soil, quality of soil, and also water. A lot of times people don't even look at water as an area where we have to worry. So these are the five areas I always talk about. And I, my genuine belief is, unless we have a way of ensuring that every seed what is sourced, at least 99% is converted into a plant. Same way they use minimum, minimum amount of fertilizers and pesticides. And we ensure that we give them technology that the soil quality is not degrading and degrading and degrading. Thereby we are going to put more and more chemicals into the, into the land. And we also ensure that water is poured only where it is necessary. These are the five things I always say is going to change the way the Indian farm. And this is where I genuinely believe both the industry and the academia can definitely look at uh, something by what I normally call as, very simply put it is precision agriculture, but it's just not precision agriculture because it can be much more beyond that. This is where at some point of time I'm going to bring in AI, robotics, everything coming to this. This is very, very, very important. And the second thing I also believe is that uh, the farmer needs to understand the importance of multi-cropping. Because one of the problems we today we are looking at in the, in the farming community is many of the younger generation kids don't want to go to farming. And when I talk to them, they say, sir, what do you do working 60 days and 60 days, 100 days, 120 days in a year? I want a year-long working environment. So it is also important to tell the farmers how to multi-crop, how to grow other things, so that they get something in their hand every week, every month. Otherwise, tell me that many of these younger kids are not going to be into the farming in a big way. So this, because especially our farms are small. We are not talking about thousands of hectares of farms where it's a very different ballgame. So this is one area I genuinely believe. So I call this wastage. So seed, fertilizer, pesticide, soil quality is actually degradation of soil is a wastage and water. This is one area I genuinely believe we need to work much more with the institutions like yourself. And also we also need to start working with the government. And why I'm saying working with the government is why it is important. Right or wrong, today we are driving agricultural mechanization only into land preparation equipment. This is unfortunate. Number two, which I always be telling my uh, friends in the ministry that the subsidy system, what we have launched, actually has killed the innovation in the country. The reason is very simple. One is uh, the subsidy drives, the subsidy is ideal. SMAM is a beautiful booklet. What is coming out from the center, I really appreciate where they said that farmers should be given the choice of what they want to buy. But unfortunately, when it comes to the states, the entire thing is a political gimmickery. And finally, they say that it has to be a tender, it has to be an L1, then I will decide what the farmers will buy. Now, what are we really trying to do is, you are trying to undermine the quality of the equipment finally going to the farm. You are not allowing to buy. The entire uh, subsidy system is creating a lot of, lot of problems. And very recently, we saw this in the happy seeders also, which I told them, you're making a small mistake, sir. You get a happy seeder 1.5 lakhs and you use it for 25 days. And out of that, you give 75,000 that subsidy. The fellow buys it, uses it for his own purpose mostly, and by the time the next year comes, he's not bothered and the equipment is not even worth the putting back into the field because people are also not worried about quality. So I said, this is where you are making a mistake. So one of the suggestions I've been giving them to change the scenario is never give a subsidy to a capital equipment. In other words, because once you give a capital equipment, you never know where it is going to be used. That's the reality of life. You buy a tractor, give a subsidy and the assumption that this tractor will be used by him to give uh, to a small farmer, which never happens. But why don't you give the subsidy directly to the small farmer, like SMAM, I'm suggested, 2,000 rupees an acre per implement. 
he is good enough for him if he can and this can be direct debit into the farmer then automatically the pull for the equipment will start coming so you don't have to give subsidy and what is the biggest advantage is then people will be worried look i am going to get 2000 rupees per acre great so if i can do that one acre instead of three hours if i can do it in two hours or one hour i am going to earn more and more this will be the mindset of the uh, the machine owner it also means that you can put better and better machines into the field not worrying about a tender not worrying about that i have to give it a low cost then somebody will start really bringing in technology this this subsidy system has killed the technology to be extremely honest with you and you talk to any implement people today i may not uh, balchandra babu is here he will say how much they are suffering in the because of the somebody will say rotavator it should be 1.2 lakh somebody is giving at 80 lakh so unless you give you are out of it correct uh, rabal chandra we doing that so this is a problem so so my request to the in fact i returned it to the secretary i returned it to the, the minister saying that sir move from giving a subsidy to the capital equipment but please give it for the user because that is measurable that means you pay that one acre is done then you pay and uh, recently we did this. i mean we did as an experiment and we did it in three states uh, during the covid time in tamil nadu in rajasthan and uh, part of uh, up and we have already cultivated 1 lakh 1.6 lakh acres everything is documented and every renter who gave it has been paid by digital so it is not it is impossible and now we know this is paid only because the work is done not because somebody bought an equipment so this is one thing i have been telling to people the other waste stage which we don't realize is the waste stage what happens to the produce the corn or it is the fruits and vegetables see people say that uh, uh, grains the the waste stage government says 15% and we say 35% and the fruit and vegetable government say the 30% we say 40 45% can be a waste but what people don't realize is the poor farmer when a big bandi fellow or somebody actually buys from the farmer he pays him after deducting the assumption of waste stage so if you are buying 100 kgs or 100 ton he says acha isme to 70 ton bhi nikalne wala hai and that is how the final payment goes to the farm so one good thing i see in the new uh, budget and uh, i'll call it the covid budget is the thrust which has been given to the storage transportation etc this actually makes two three things if there is a storage facility farmer is not going to go for desperate say if there is a storage facility the price tend, tend to improve better if there is a decent transportation for fruits and vegetables and proper storage for fruits and vegetables the value can be protected which is done by people abroad it's not that uh, so this is something i've been noticing it is a very very good thing has happened that at least the thought process has come in the second thought process what i noticed in the covid budget i still like to call it the covid budget because i think genuinely the Uh, sometimes real bad things gives rise to good thing see we have been talking for a long time on uh, essential commodities act we have been talking a long time on the need to amend the apmc and said look if i can i can make a cigarette and sell wherever i want why should the poor farmer should be told where he has to sell things i mean it is a very unfair thing to that poor chap yes you create a, a market so that he can sell wherever he wants that's what we should have done rather than that we have been constraining him and constraining and what we did in 1950s and 60s we are unwilling to change i mean many of the things are i still still tell them very openly i talk like this i said look you chaps are using the farmers as political pawns rather than you are really not talking to help them they have been my blunt statement a lot of people are not like you with sex with the politician will never like you but uh, that's a different ball game but this is the reality so the market access opening is a very interesting thing but it is not the market access opening see like an industry we started knitting from one end of the industry to the other end that means right from the smallest of the manufacturing you can call it tire 1 tire 2 tire 3 tire 4 tire pe ek bolt nut wala usko hum log integrate karke integrate karke then somebody made an engine somebody made a gearbox somebody made a alternator then you made a car that is the kind of integration and logistic and you know how much of money has gone into logistic in automobile where is the logistics in the agriculture so unless you create a logistic system which ties one end 
and to the other end, which is the customer. And when I talk about customer, I'm not talking about domestic. I am talking about the international customer. Because you get sometimes better pricing international if you are there at the right time. But for that, you require a policy. In the sense, policy is, you cannot be major. You cannot say that, Tell me which customer is willing to work with you like that. If I tell my uh, dealer, yeah, to tujhe dega, to tu upar deke that fellow is going to leave me. This is the reality, isn't it? He is looking for something which is consistent. This is true with every single government abroad. This is also true with us. When we are buying something from outside, we expect that we get a steady supply. So we need an integrated system. Today, we had a large discussion in Fiki also, where uh, Ashok Dalwai was uh, one of our uh, uh, guest of honors. And this is something we have been repeating. He's also been very clear that I need to look at an integrated system. So in other words, if it is grain, if it is... Uh, and then we all, he also accepted that most of the go-downs what he have, unfortunately, they are not warehouses. There's a lot of difference between what a go-down and what a warehouse is. A warehouse is supposed to protect something. A go-down is where just to keep it. And uh, uh, Bhagavan Barose, I mean, there's something everybody knows, not that. So he said, we need to have big, big changes in the, in the concept of agriculture. Another thing which he also came and very strongly talked about was world as a market. Because unless you look at world as a market, he, we also believe that you will not get any benefit to the farm. Finally, what is our aim? The far see, farmer today are farming, but if tomorrow you want him to farm, he must see that he is getting a benefit. 2.4 lakh crore is subsidy bill in agriculture. Uh, officially, government says 40% is wasted. God knows where it goes. So what again I'm telling him, look, buddy, you started a program saying that per acre farmer I'll give 6,000 rupees, 9,000. Why can't you convert this 2.4 lakh crores, which is basically for uh, fertilizers, etc., uh, etc., et and look at how many farmers are available. As per you, 6.5 lakh crore is uh, KCC. Now you want to increase it by 2.5 crores, uh, 2.5 uh, uh, crores more. So you will have 12 crores of farmers under K, nine crores of farmers under KCC out of 12 crores of farmers. This is an estimate. So if you have that, why couldn't you DBT directly to them? The advantage what you get is again, I think what first time what I told, the fertilizer industry, everything will work normally like a commercial industry. And the farmer will have the money, he will decide, then he will decide that buy from X or Y or Z, and then because he has got the money. And I gave them a very good example of how the gas cylinder industry got transformed. When we were initially the subsidy was on top. We, God knew where the gas cylinders went. But when the subsidy was DBT to the customer, we have better control. And today you can bring in transparency by IT also. IT has got phenomenal transparency. So if you do this, the, the estimate is the 2.4 lakh crores which goes in subsidy, there is, a, there is an estimate that 50% they will save. Forget 40% let them save. This 40% is good enough to create an India brand for agriculture abroad. Imagine you are willing to put that kind of a money into the India brand of agriculture year after year. And then this side, the farmers are also happy. They are getting the DBT and then, see today they don't have to go and buy, say I'll buy XYZ brand up because that is what is getting directed. It's become like a ration shop. So these are the basic changes I think we need to drive. Then we, they talked about one India concept. Amaratu sub one India one actually which I said, I fully agree. I That's have no, no, no the, the difference of opinion. And uh, so we are going to One India, but I inter today ask them uh, frankly that question. Sir, are you working as a One India? Because there is one center, 29 states becoming 30 states and 31 states, I know where it's going to end up. And everybody is trying to say agriculture is my baby. Then we have ministries like agricultural ministry. Then there is a processing ministry. Then there is a warehousing coming, hanging separate. Then there is a water ministry. Then there's a transportation ministry. And said, look, every one of them should be part of agriculture. Because if I have to create end-to-end -end chain, unless every one of them comes in and starts pitching, and everybody starts talking in the same voice, 
how are you going to do it? So we said, look, uh, you did, uh, you had a serious problem on GST. What did you do in GST? You got a GST council. We got state people represent that. You had central people representing you. And then you started taking decisions which is accepted by everybody. My question is, do you ever thought about agricultural council? Do you ever thought of an agricultural council which can dictate between states and uh, center? As a joint, I am not saying there will be one man will be able to do it. Same way between different ministries. Ministries are, I mean, I'm, I'm very, very frank. There is a fellow, uh, see, you look at Tamil Nadu, you look at Punjab. The electricity is free. Brilliant. Because it's a very politically, what is happening to the groundwater? And the biggest problem what I notice is, they don't even measure what is given. Because there's not even a meter. It is just tapped and given to farmers. So even if you, so I told them, sir, charge them one rupee. At least you know how much electricity is being used by them. And then you start asking, this fellow has got only one acre. How is he consuming one lakh of electricity a year? Because then you will find he's put up with some other uh, facility behind. So unless there is a measure, it's going to be extremely, so that's why I'm telling you, people, different walks of people are working in different directions and every one of them is endangering agriculture because unfortunately agriculture is what? A poor farmer. And people say, oh, farmer has got a voice. He said, yes, they have a voice once in five years. That's all the voice they have. After all, they have no voice. And this is the problem we have been facing. Unless we are willing to look at a unified India with a very clear agricultural council kind of setup, which is actually willing to prove that. Because see, some of the things we want to do is not going to happen in one year. It's going to take five years, maybe two times the normal, uh, maybe 10 years to get certain reforms to really happen. See, we did this in 1990 on automobile, when we really had an industrial revolution in India, where we broke a lot of things and we completely transformed ourselves and made, and today India is known as a, we are very good quality exporter of automobile components. Quality-wise, we are rated much higher than China. Price-wise, may not be, because but then our price, Chinese prices are very political prices. I don't want to get into it. But quality-wise, we have been rated extremely well. I have experience because we supply components abroad and they also buy from China. And the mo most of the people have told me the components from India, we are able to rely much better. So if we can do that in automotive, why are we not able to do in agriculture, which not only I'm looking at the GDP contribution of agriculture, all the things we do, see today with the uh, EC Act, relaxation, we are allowing a, a processor to store much more than what is normally allowed today. He can store any amount, which is a brilliant thing because I'll give you one example. I don't know how many of you realize in Rajasthan, they had a Monday strike uh, about 20 days before. Okay, so I was a little worried. I went at that time, I told the secretary, sir, sir, abhi to market utha hai. And ye time mein mandi ka strike aayega. Then uh, the poor farmer is going to suffer and every related input activity is going to suffer. He told me, buddy, you don't worry. Because the power of mandi in Rajasthan has come down a lot. Because you now farmers have started directly selling into the uh, processing units. And he said, when I have 500 Monday, I got 2,000 people directly buying also. And believe me, two days time, the Monday strike was withdrawn. Now, that's an interesting thing which I... That means the farmer given a choice to sell where he want, a lot of the intermediaries can be... Uh, I, I won't say they will, rem they will vanish, but they will start working the way they should be working. See, I'm not degrading Mondays. Mondays work. The, one of the reasons why the farmers used to get money before the much before the harvest. They were the creditors for farmers. Because banks don't go. Banks require everything 100% sure to give you a loan. So I always tell bankers, bankers, when I don't need you, you're willing to give me a loan. When I need you, will never give. So this is the reality even in uh, when you go to the farm. So Mondays are that a lot. They were the creditors. They were the willing to take it and they were doing forward trading. Everything they did. But we also didn't utilize it and they became a sort of heavy duty in between people and the farmers started losing money. So these are the reform areas. I genuinely believe there are time to come 
we need to work all these things. I'll give you one more example, which I think I have to tell. Now, I, people may say, hey, you're talking about your area, but I can tell that uh, because Balachandra Babu is here and some of you people are also in the agricultural equipment area. Today, I can get a car tested in four months time. And that means I can give a card for testing and I can put it on the market in four months, including the crash test, etc. For a tractor, it takes me 18 months. Or an agricultural equipment, it takes me 12 months to 18 months. I ask a very simple question. These people, even today, see, what does the car do? They look for safety testing. They look for emission. Period. Whereas our fellows will say, Aapka gear ka wear kitna hai? Aapka shaft, shaft ka wear kitna hai? Aapka uh, linkage ka height kitna hai? I ask them this question, but why are you chaps worried about all this? This is our problem. We are the manufacturer. If I don't meet the quality standard, the customer is going to throw me out. We are not in 1950s and 1960s. And in this process, I mean, this I've made bluntly, I've written letters also, but the question of what happens is, who is going to build the cat? And another question also, I tell them that uh, if you want to bring technology into agriculture, you need to create a governing council in the Ministry of Agriculture. I'm talking about only mechanization now. I'm not talking about anything else. Wherein I want the best of the industry people. I want the best of academies, academicians, people like you who have been in the field. And then we also must have the ministry people. It can be headed by a minister, a, a joint secretary, like you do for ARA and other areas. We are not saying. But we need the top quality people there. You should be willing to pay them. If you don't willing to pay them, you still put in the university regulation, the other rupee, 5,000 rupees, and by the time you retire, you get only around 2 lakh. You will never get talent. This is again and again in telling them. See, when you did this for automobile, you people were together with this. You know, DHI did that. Everybody was together in creating ARA. Everybody was together in creating an ICAT. Everybody was together in creating a uh, NATRIP. And today, some of them are uh, internationally well known. They are able to do testing for companies abroad. Like uh, the crash test in India is probably one third the cost of the crash test anywhere in the Europe. Mm -hmm. So if we can do that by government and public collaboration, why are we not doing this in the agricultural industry? Your question, sir, Dr. Syed, is if you do all this, the value of universities will start going up. Like the IITs came in and started giving technology back to the people. I don't understand why the agricultural college, I don't call them agricultural college alone. See, agronomy, engineering, IT, everything is now mixing together. Yes. It cannot be separated out. So they can give much more technology to the government, but you really create a canvas for it. And who can create a better canvas than government itself? I told them, create this. Create a governing body all India level. Create, uh, then you have subcommittees at the state level. Get the best of talent onto that uh, committees. And then see what is going to happen to the uh, industry on mechanization, AI, and uh, robotics and drones. We can do fantastic. In fact, I genuinely believe that drones, etc. in India work better than anywhere else because of the small area of needs. So this is what I have to say today. I think I have taken a reasonable amount of time talking about what I have to tell. Some of the things have genuinely come from my heart. I mean, that's why you'll see that I have literally nothing in my hand because I've been repeating this in many, many areas of late. And that's where I am, sir. Is there anything else you want me to tell? Any questions? I'll be more than happy to be answering it. But I have one more request. I think uh, we will take also a responsibility. I will personally do that. We will start and spending some time with your students. We will do that. Let us allocate a day or two in a month to spend time with the students. And I will ensure that industry people will come and time send the students more like a professor to tell them dunya mein kya ho hai. Not to talk about what the company is doing, no. I mean, we don't want to come there and talk about uh, our company and we can, that's it, that the HR fellow will do it for recruitment. I am talking about how can we handle them, help them to understand what is happening in the world. What is the industry looking at the in graduates coming out of your colleges. What is the skill levels we are looking at? Them? 
what do you think the kind of fellows we need to have because we have we have some problems on this because the what the expectation of industry is changing so fast but the agricultural or even why agriculture even most of the uh, the colleges are not able to build up and deliver children who meet the industry expectation so i think something we can work on this in agriculture i'll be more than happy to collaborate with you spend some time and to do this let us take two colleges third it up and that will become a benchmark that's all sir i am i am stopping here thank you thank you thank you mr keshav this is one of the very interesting talk i ever heard in especially you are very bold and your ideas are really what it it thinks with all of us uh, that is one of the reasons why we started this uh, webinar and i think last two years isa is already trying to link the industry in isc seminars we had in in bhu as well as in pune we had the industry participation first time speakers i think indramani uh, and uh, professor singh are working very hard and everybody else working very hard to bring the industry um, and a lot of speakers were there and uh, i think like you a person i think we require also in the tag team i would request you to come into the tag team we are looking for such people actually this you are the first one to talk the series of uh, talks we are going to have regarding these subsidies and how to uh, really change how do we the, be the part of the change for example you talk also about monitoring uh, that's what we are talking about here see we want to monitor everything starting from water what you supplied i told we talk about monitoring even the solar pumps we are talking okay. two lakh solar pumps already is installed and another 20 lakh 27 lakh is going to be installed but monitoring we don't know really because the, the past uh, so we had some speakers coming and talking about so we are in the correct direction second we, you talked about also sales mondays i am really very 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 interesting on logistics nobody bothered about it you touched the point of logistics for example india is not a poor country when you think about five years you are producing 30% more sugar and last 3 years we are producing 30% more rice and wheat and we are thinking of one of the minister mentioning we can use rice for ethanol production i mean i imagine how much water we use for the rice yeah, okay. of rice yes. so i think i think we are in the correct direction i think there are a lot of questions we have time also i will take questions now thank you very much kesan i will take the questions now from others please please can you write uh, uh, professor ganjan singh please first uh, just a second you have to enable your mic just wait just wait a sec professor ganjan singh i cannot see your mic have you enabled he, he has to unmute from uh, yeah. yeah i i i will unmute all of them then i think you you people move now you can professor gajendra singh you have to uh uh hello just a second just now, now now we, now i can hear you yes okay Please. okay ah uh, it's a case one thank you very much for excellent and uh, really we are very thankful to your support through your uh, scholarship from uh, messi ferguson for our students uh, for phd masters and bachelor uh, anyway i know case one for long time you made a uh, brilliant presentation on subsidy now where is the hitch with all these examples where where, where we hold up you have so many meetings with the government and everybody where is the hitch and where we as isa as a society what role we can play with you to push it sir the hitch actually happens it's not the bureaucratic hitch to be very honest with you many of the bureaucracy understands what you are trying to tell them but whenever i go and talk to the center and say look your policies are good but why are you allowing the states to do what they want they said see we are only an advisory setup we can only give an advisory we cannot insist that they have to do this last budget they also had a little more teeth the way i look at it because 
they can mandate and their money shared by the center can be depending upon the mandate fulfillment so they may have little more but the problem really happens at the state level okay. i can also give you some two states or even the two states doing very well see look at gujarat and maharashtra when it comes to subsidy everything on an it port nobody gets into to the thing and it is not a political mandate nobody is trying to make anything out of but i mean i don't want to name the other states and when you go there the entire thing is converted for political use Uh, to such an extent, once I had to go and tell the secretary concerned that look, I don't want to. In fact, uh, one state, as TMA, we refused to quote twice. The entire people, all of us said we will not participate for a simple reason. First of all, they wanted an add-on, which will look so bad. Mm. I couldn't give that as a reason for doing it. So, but the, and whatever they bought from us two years back has not been paid. All the dealers, something like six hundred to seven hundred crores has been stuck, and unfortunately, the dealer is the front end. And uh, when they become terribly in a bad shape, then finally the company picks it up, and then they come with a new tender without even a payment. Now I asked him, how can anybody cope with the payment without a payment? And I said, look, we have an audit problem. If I don't give a give a payment term, and end of the year you don't give me the money, my auditor will ask me to write off. Because you see, it's not even a payment term from the government, so I had to assume that the money won't come. But they refused to change that, and then we all of us said we will not participate. But how long can you do this? That's why I said it's a political mandate. It's really, really becoming difficult. Thank you. Uh, I see a hand, Robesh. Robesh. Yeah. Good evening, Doctor. Uh, Sir, Mr. Krishnan. I think it was very inspiring and uh, very frank talk. so i uh, just wanted to know your opinion about you know you talked about uh, how uh, you know this homologation takes its own time and difficult to sell now this emission regulations which are coming you know now and later on also what do you think will the there will be any change in homologation process because again with that saying that we have a homologation so what's your position you know on this and what do you feel how things will change actually <clears throat> how you can influence also so i did touch on the emission because we have been telling government do not have the emission for tractors in 2020 and at least give 2 years so that we can actually test the competence in the real conditions in the farm see the trouble what people don't realize is many a times we have a habit of removing the bonnet putting the water tractor into the puddling and third thing is that we have a habit of storing the diesel in drums and i won't blame anybody because if you you know today the tractors don't cannot hold more than 60 70 liters so that the whole thing is over in 8 hours so that a farmer every time cannot come all the way to a petrol pump which may be 10 kilometers away so he uh, ensures that the uh, petrol uh, diesel is filled in drum but these are all going to be extremely uh, let us say it's not it's not going to help uh, the quality of the fuel uh, fies or so this is the one worry we had so we told them don't do it and we said this is going to harm farmer because the cost is also going to go up anything up to 1.2 to 1.6 lakhs per tractor and i said this is not going even a small percentage of productivity is not coming whereas the cost of operation is going up drastically and uh, when this came up a couple of years back in 2017 at that time said no 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 this is supreme court order then we went to the supreme court and they also very clearly stated all the emission thing we have been talking about is for automobile because they are the ones who is crowding the uh, cities we never talked about tractors and this also we told the ministry sir this is what they have been saying and uh, we have been really having a running fight because now it is uh, covid time so we said please postpone it let us prove the product when i i told them very simply that uh, today we have people supplying fies then there are uh, uh, you know particle uh, filters and i don't think this thing that farmers will never change because in order to change a particle filter will cost 20000 rupees or 25000 depending on the size and the farmer is never going to change a particle filter and in, when i had the discussion the, in delhi they said no 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 how can you say that i said very simple you put the so many uh, buses in uh, delhi 
And that's all. And how, tell me how many particle filters you have changed. The answer is none. So he said, you don't do it. How do you expect the farmer to do it? So what really happens finally is they remove the particulate filter, they remove the, they change the electronic, and it gives much more emission than what is originally intended. So mm -hmm. I told him, this is the problem, people, you don't realize. And we have been fighting it out and fighting it out. Unfortunately, this is where I say, you know, I have an issue here because I requested even the Ministry of Agriculture that you want to make a noise. Because when as industrial, as I make a noise, people think that we are talking for our advantage. We told them, no. In our presentation, he told them, we supply to United States, we supply to Europe, and we supply to those better than these standards what India is going to have. We are one level higher than that. There, I don't have a problem because people are accustomed to the kind of use. They don't have puddling there. But if I do it in India and if I don't test it, and second is, end of the day, the farm, the tractor manufacturers get the blame, not the supply, fellow who supplies the FIE, not the fellow who supplies the uh, filter. Because we had an example which uh, some of you may know. We, uh, about seven years back or eight years back, a lot of us went from uh, uh, in line to a rotary pump. And we said that's better for the and almost every one of us withdrew. Yeah, yeah. I know. And 20,000 tractors, 25,000 tractors had to withdraw and chain the pump. Because not any simple reason. There has been, uh, diesel has been, uh, uh, there is, you know, the diesel quality has been bad. I don't want to say how it is, why it is. But uh, the pumps just failed. And then I asked them all, this is the question I asked the in the, during the ministry, yeah. why are you not calling those suppliers and say, yeah. give me a product which works in India. Then I'm willing to do anything you want, which you don't want to do. I think, I think, so I think this we will, is an issue. I think uh, that's one, one of the reasons to discuss. We require uh, something like this webinar series to find out. Now, I take the second question uh, from Dera sir. Thank you. Gomsi, please. Good evening, sir. Uh, Dr. Devra is here from Gujarat. Uh, Kesan sir, I am very much thankful to you for two compliments. Uh, the important thing is for the very inspiring lecture and another thing, just you have given, uh, you are having good reputation for Gujarat because I am from the Gujarat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much for that. Sir, while, uh, uh, while you are talking about the DBT, so generally the opinion about the uh, subsidies that it should be in the, uh, the form of the DBT, but uh, many a times industry also faced a lot of problem because of that also. And it had happened in Gujarat in uh, uh, two year back, particularly in the micro irrigation system. You see the uh, subsidy is 70 to 90% in the, this micro irrigation system. And most of the marginal and small farmers Whenever the question comes for a huge amount, uh, 1.5 to 2 lakhs or so. So in that case, either the farms are uh, farmers are not able to make that advance payment to the industry, or they are not having that mindset. So in that way, ultimately the government of Gujarat again had started that that, that in some of the cases the DBT should not be propagated uh, there. On. So here my point is that in all the cases the DBT probably may not uh, work uh, suitably. So it should be thought of from case to case. This is my point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I actually, I'm not disagreeing on anything. What I'm saying, what I said is, there have been areas where DBT has worked very well. And one example is the gas cylinder system. Understand how it has been working. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is a core group to look at it, it and even some modifications has to be done, and I still believe Gujarat model is a very good model when it comes to mechanization uh, uh, subsidies. I think that's been running well. There has been hardly any complaints. So that's Thank a credit you. to Gujarat. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I you. would request uh, Dr. Indramani for your comments. To Mr. Keswal. Uh, yes. But, uh, you know, as expected, and uh, as I said that we have been discussing about this, this, these issues, and ISA, in fact, shares all your concern. And Professor Singh is here, and we also believe that in present part, the uh, subsidy on increments is a curse, and uh, it should be changed. And uh, in, uh, in our earlier uh, discussions, uh, we informed your view 
that it should be given at the farmer's level. That will increase the use hours. First thing, that will increase the use hours. And you said very rightly said that for ownership you cannot give subsidy. For owning and keeping in, in your in your garage, for that you should not be given subsidy. I have the farmers who who use not more than 50 hours tractor implement system, but they own it. There is no need even to own that uh, tractor implement system. That is very good point, and we will take it up with you. As I, I told you that we have will have a uh, discussion with the, the system, and that it should be implemented. I say is with the industry, and this very very important issue. The second one uh, that uh, testing, <coughs> me and Professor Singh both share this. This is a great concern, and uh, taking this much time, and sometimes I do feel that uh, the kind of you know. Uh, a test and kind of details which are required should be should be in fact revisited and uh, uh, system must see that uh, what is required because I visit, I have visited some of these uh, you know uh, manufacturer manufacturers their own research system their own testing system it is it is none less than uh, you know uh, the systems which where we are testing it properly. So I want to say that uh, we have to be more practical and you are very, very uh, important statement you made that reliability is concerned of the manufacturers. It is, it is as important for manufacturers, as important for the uh, you know, users or customers as to manufacturers. And who is the best, uh, who will be having most, uh, really most concern about his product? It is your baby. So you will be feeling. So I always you know, uh, you know, advocate that uh, manufacturers of a certain label, a certain threshold label, please do not uh, do not ask much questions. You just encourage them how to pro proliferate this, you know, and take the, the technology to the uh, you know, end users in different part of the country. So that is very, very important. So this, with the ministry, we are advocating that they should have a position of commissioner engineering. Like we have commissioner horticulture, we have commissioner agriculture. So similarly, commissioner engineering or commissioner mechanization to, to have the, the broader one we would like to say that it should commissioner mechanization because energy is coming in big way pumping system is coming in big way these are all concerns so and processing that you say and you try to in the very beginning you say so 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 right hand doesn't know what left hand what left hand doesn't know what right hand wants but you are Manufacturing, you are doing production at one place, processing at that place, marketing at third place. I think uh, we, as a frank body, because we are we are association, professional association, and you as an industry, and we can take the farmers, even you have the academicians already and have same opinion. The system has same opinion. Many of joint secretaries I'm interacting. Probably what you said, be the process seeing us. What is the problem? I feel problem is with the less exposure of many, uh, you know, functionaries, which are at lower level even, you know, who are advisor, who are going to propose file and other things. And I have seen, been in some of the meetings and I have seen that for other problem. So ISA will try to educate them also, look for the, look for the benefit of the country and look for the benefit of the farmers. The moment they agree to this, then because everybody, you want farmer, we want farmer, government want farmer. That's how government changed the name even as farmers welfare. So this Ministry of Agriculture and farmers welfare. So where is that farmers welfare? The farmer welfare should come at the center stage. So that is very, very important thing. You talk about the governing council on engineering that, that may be under that commissioner, commissioner engineering and uh, processing. I have already written also, uh, we have been handling that, uh, uh, you know, if you want the real input, fast input, from and latest input in agriculture, engineering, in mechanization, then you should have a similar that like you are having in horticulture, in, in, in agriculture, similarly you should have in engineering also. So we would like to support or like, we also need support of industry because uh, the present system, if you hammer, probably that gives uh, more, more noise and more impact. <laughs> And jointly we can do this. I'm really very much uh, uh, pleased that what you attend. Maybe put up this, uh, you know, this as a note and uh, at a different. And the, the offer which you gave for our students, and uh, I ha I know you that you know we did not put much energy to get ten lakh rupees. You readily agreed. Okay, you want to get gold medal? Please give gold medal. Similarly, we want you because the 
the students to whom you will train, they are basically for you. If we train a good student, then the industry will get good, good you know, uh, uh, craft uh, to, to, to get in their system. If the students are not good, then, then, then they, you will not get good, uh, uh, you know, employable uh, engineers. So it is a very big build, build situation and the offer which you have given is very, very important. And I say it's definitely going to take up by using this kind of thing. We can have a special, as you suggested, half day seminar should be complete and happy to pick up some industry and they should not, they will not talk the type or uh, this and there. They will talk what world is having or what you need to do, where you have to go. That should be more secular talk. Uh, without without uh, uh, in the industry name or thing, but for where they have to go, they also need that. And then uh, we are already having one point that you said that we should have uh, this startup session. We will have some, uh, you know, the, we have we are going to have the discussion on that uh, at the seminar also, and there are some speakers also. Gujarat model, I, I have also appreciate that uh, something was there that a non-agricultural state became an agricultural state. So on 28th of June, we are going to have Dr. Pat Patel, our uh, former uh, vice chancellor and former president of ISA. He will, uh, he, he, I have requested him to talk what made Gujarat a Gujarat agriculture. In a non-agricultural state, how it converted to a good agricultural state. So that we want to, we will have on 28th and uh, my friend Rosen Jota is here and all these, uh, these uh, people, uh, we are jointly working and working for the whole country, you know, and uh, that's how. The, so with this, uh, once again, I really thank you very much and uh, it was it was a very interesting to, to hear you and uh, all those points which I have given, those are our concern also. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank so, you Dr. Indramani. We you. have... Uh, Another interesting topic, short topic. We have an interesting topic. You see, actually, we are we are talking about now, right now. We mentioned also what we talked about: drones, artificial intelligence, big data, and uh, robots. Uh, very important for in Indian context. We have to understand how to democratize. See, for example, a, a drone to use for a spraying. Uh, we need a lot of restrictions in India, even for the small field, big size. It is. We have to measure those age, everything will be very careful. So there are a lot of things to be done even you want to use the latest technology in Indian agriculture. So, and I would request now uh, Rabesh to, Rabesh Maiti to talk. Rabesh is actually, is a postgraduate mechanical engineering from IAS Bangalore and around 38 years experience, he has got a design development of uh, uh, material handling equipment to automobiles. And last 20 years, he worked for tractor company he was one of the main pioneers to uh, establish the John Deere uh, R&D uh, division in India, as well as he also uh, worked with the Mahindra uh, for Precision Act Technologies. Right now, he's also working for a 400 horsepower tractor. So I would leave the floor to Robesh uh, to talk about democratization of uh, technology in agriculture. Robesh. Yeah, I can share my screen yes. or you will Yes, share? yes, you can, you can, you can. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes. Uh, so th thank you, uh, Dr. Sayed. Uh, and uh, of course, I would thank also, uh, you know, Dr. Indramani and Professor Gajendra or Dr. Gajendra for giving me this opportunity. I think we heard a very important, very frank, a very interesting talk from Mr. Keshwan. I think this was very inspiring. Uh, so I, I do not have all the contents he presented, but some of the contents he presented, you. I'll also touch base. So definitely uh, when I'm talking about democratization of technologies, it's a philosophy. And this is when I worked for my past organization on precision agriculture technologies, I started looking at and I, I did ask this question to all those who were engaged, how much will you charge you know, a, a farmer of one acre? And when I'm talking about one acre, I'm talking about one small and marginal farmers and everybody knows how many of them, 80, 80 to 84 percent, you know, are having about less than five acre land. And any technologies, if you look at any cost, including sensors, IOTs, drone, I think as such cannot be applied, uh, you know, and if I look at any cost, uh, it becomes almost unreachable to him and he's not applying it. And in the process, 
what is happening is is some kind of uh, inefficient applications which we are seeing in some form or other form so this philosophy has started developing challenge and this is one discussion where i came in contact with dr you know sayed and i did challenge him okay how much do you think and we talked about some number and he was a little bit uh, you know agitated how can you talk about the farmer will pay and i said that when i put a technologies i've got a philosophy whereby he will make much more than many much many more times than what he is think, going to apply i think he'll change and that is what i'm going to talk about a little bit uh, it also means uh, uh, you know oops one minute oh. just hold on so uh, so when i talk about the uh, Uh, you know res research i think there's a great respect for all the research and we heard so many topics over where the individual researches have been done but ultimately it has to reach to the farmer and we are, i am very particular about that one acre farmer or a five acre farmer i think this has to solve his problem and we know that for growing in many folds or meeting the current requirements of the population growth we need to have a productivity from the same land it has to come from a technology so then i started forming a philosophy of how do i apply it so uh, so it's it's a, i i actually started putting them into four pillars it's a flexible solution you know flexibility of the solution it is the overall integration and this integration i talked in my past presentations also and it is very very important and i'll tell you how it is important over here of course data and this is where mr keshwan also talked about and also dr sayed talked about you know monitoring data management and and how it can be very easily available to the farmer and there is lot of data available past speakers talked about it and of course strong committed and this also was talked you know administration is governance governance from the farmer organization so these are few topics i'll touch base over there so first part is to be saying that the technology is applicable to the farmer i think tractor was the first mechanization everybody knows it and and already talked about farmer cannot pay the price of a tractor for you know that marginal farmer so how can it can be applied as a farm as a service and almost every organization it's also farm as a service as an you know there are companies there but all the oem tractor manufacturers have also started in this process what i am saying is now this is a time for even the agricultural engineers to when you think about the design can we think about a more modular to help farm as a service i'm saying one of the philosophy we can think about and this uh, you know statement has started coining is a full service tractor and we have to think beyond that full service tractor it actually means that we should eliminate the need of matching implements for example like that your standardization so we have to so you think about how much that entrepreneur will be supported if he gets to buy any tractor and any implement similarly now we are talking about emissions i talked about i think there the implements are going to talk to tractor communication if that communication has to and we talked about it in my first uh, uh, webinar also we said these have to talk very freely there has to be standardization of uh, communication protocols it should be open source and that's where these are some of the things which we can help farm as a service the another good part is the gender neutrality and now i am of course working on the technology of course here so helping one of the company here but 50% we know we know that uh, the labor is a current issue and we want to meet it through the mechanization and other kind of things but 50% of the labor or less than little are women and and today i went to uh, one of the south institute and i was giving a similar talk coming from the industry and the one question came from the lady why don't you make a tractor you know lady student that what be why don't you make a tractor which is you know i can drive i said what are your problems and sorry uh, uh mr case when i will be giving so some of the problems they said okay i cannot press the clutch clutch is very hard i cannot shift the gears i cannot reach them you know and brakes are so hard i said you know are you you think that you are thinking in the direction but if i can give you a tractor which is not requiring a clutch which is not requiring a brake which is not requiring to shift the gear i think then it makes the, the so people have to start thinking of farm mechanization at that front so that is one philosophy there so there is one work i saw uh, globally happening this is a dot technology if you if you look at it what is that they have they have and this is now about 2 years before that initiative was started and it is now purchased by raven and what you see is only a frame 
Uh, what is that in the frame? And on the left-hand side, if you see on the center picture, there is an engine inside. There are four uh, hydrostatic uh, you know, uh, motors there, and they're driving the wheels. It's so modular that you put any of the attachment and it becomes an application. You know, you have, there's a grain card, there is a, there is a, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> a sprayer there, and you can just get lashed to it and it does its work. So something like this modularity has, so this changes the concept of the, the mechanization, the design for the mechanization, and this is one of the philosophy over there. Second flexible member, and it's one of, one of my favorite is drone, and I have talked to Dr. Sayed several times. Drone along with you know, imaging technology when I'm using for surveillance, for taking a map, for, for, for taking a decision map out of that, I think I can do wonders of this. Imaging has so many advantages. You plug that with a drone. Drone is actually a means to drive around. It is flexible. And also, Dr. You know, Mr. Caseman talked about it. I think we are supposed to be, you know, all these ground equipments, they have a limitation of movement, but drone can probably move 200 acres in, in, in half an hour. And there was a work done by Sony camera himself that they provided an imaging hyperspectral camera, digital camera, along with the processing. By the time it completes all of the, uh, this one, it is able to give you some of those. And I was happy that drone was taken the drone as a surveillance was taken as one of the topic in, in our webinar there. My confidence, as uh, uh, Dr. Sayed said, I think spraying confidence is low. There's a lot to be done. Of course, it makes it flexible, but I think we have to understand a lot about it, and, and, and that's what it is. The other advantage of having an imaging with digital that it supports a data collections, and that data is actually the AI. So that's how we can take convert all the, uh, the mapping done into an intelligence, which can be a decision mapping. So this is one of my favorite, and I believe it's one of the requirement in coming. A service provider has to look at saying that, can I now surve surveillance for the whole 400 acre, you know, all the farms of that village, and then provide by the morning uh, a menu of what, how he has to attend his, or he may not be required to even attend. I can tell him that you do, your farm is okay, don't worry. In that case, he utilizes his time for many more things. Thing. So that becomes a sort of a disruptive technology. Uh, Robo is another one, but it's not my favorite. And, and what I see is it's very complex. When I talk about one acre, uh, you definitely need AI. I mean, a lot of work around this, a lot of work is happening. I think it is very much connected to saying that very specialized uh, you know, uh, work you do for something like harvesting, fruit harvesting, tomato harvesting. For one acre, I don't think it still is a set that flexible or it will be easily payable by a farmer. But however, there's a possibility now, a philosophy which is now growing industry. So far, the tractor industries has been very much on a, on a utility tractors, trying to do a lot of utility jobs with a heavy tractor. And I think Mr. Caseman also talked about this puddling and the puddling scenario is getting changed with something like small and lightweight tractor. And this auto steering and GPS is coming. I think that can be converted into a robo for many more applications. So there is a flexibility possibility to convert a small tractors, lightweight tractor as a robo. Next one, of course, is one of my favorite is uh, uh, definitely we talked about it. I think we talked about, uh, you know, and, and, and here I would request, uh, you know, I say as well as the TAC team here, can we siphon off a small group of experts from our team to really look at this scenario of data availability? And we talked about monitoring, we talked about data collection, we talked about data processing, collecting it similar, along with the, along with the, you know, when you do our doing the data collection and monitoring, along with the, uh, uh, I'll say the uh, policy intervention, everything can change. So we have so much of data, you know, your last, uh, you know, last presentation, Dr. Shankar presented that, you know, in COVID scenario, people didn't know how many labs are there, but in COVID scenario, they came up to say so many labs are there. Similarly, there's so much of a data available, can we collect them? and then make it available as easy availability to, to many of the entrepreneurs, many of the farmers, many we have to make it easy. So there's like land data, uh, which can be connected linked to the Aadhaar. You know, that's one more project Dr. You know, Sayed has been talking about. I think that's a very unique thing and a very noble thing as well. Uh, similarly, you have got Google Earth, you know, a lot of data, ISRO last, uh, last webinar, there was a ISRO data available. I tried to look, I am doing one experiment in the farm. I tried to look, of course, the Google Earth data and try to monitor. There were challenges. And yesterday, uh, or last webinar, it was talked. I think when you come to the resolution, the resolution is five meter and beyond that, you really cannot make out a lot of things. But 
we probably can work out solution. Google Earth has a solution. ISRO has a solution. I think we have to connect with them and find out how. I talked about entrepreneurs. You know, they can take a lot of benefits. I talked to one of the entrepreneurs. Of, of, he provides some kind of a, 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 you know, artificial intelligence and the you know, mechanization solutions to the, to the farmers. And what he made a statement that he makes money outside of India through his tool, but not inside of, uh, and he finds some challenges. So I asked him a simple thing, you know, that how do you get your softwares, you know, which you, you uh, do you have a group of people doing uh, application softwares? He said, I take open source soft software. I think this is a direction we have to move when we are collecting data, when we are looking at processing, we have to look at that it is available to our, you know, uh, you know, agriculture as a software, you know, open source software. I was surprised when I was trying to do a research around, uh, you know, drones, I found that the drone being manufactured in one of the African countries and they took an open source data uh, or they took a support from one of the Indian companies and from my company, which was close to the adjacent, of course, I was surprised that they are working with one of the institute, open source institute in India. And that was one of the state close to my place, which is the Kerala. And Kerala has an open, open source institute. And I think there is, so there is a lot available only. We need to find out where they are available. Can we they leverage each other's, you know, for a benefit there. Similarly, I talked about this monitoring and I've been talking with doctor also, you know, our, do our agriculture engineers have to learn programming? No, they have to know about it. Uh, they have to understand how to utilize it, but the whole process of data collection, uh, you know, config configuring any any kind of equipment, it should be like a, a drop down menu. Like, I don't think now in Excel spreadsheet, one has to learn how the Excel spreadsheet is made or 3D modeling. Now they have a drop down menu. So when we talk about data collection, probably a monitoring system, which can, which is so modular, so simple, it can be applied to many places that when you connect it to computer, it automatically config configures itself. Then it has got a wide variety of, uh, you know, arrays of uh, uh, the, uh, you know, sensors and IOTs and it collects data. Collection of data and saying that I will, and that's what I talked in our my uh, you know <clears throat> uh, uh, biogas uh, project also that collection of data and taking a decision based on data will change the whole industry and this is where when we talked about subsidy and I said if monitoring can be done on some probably that itself will if we can put our money for monitoring I think we will pay for the subsidy disadvantages which we are getting and this connection of course we have to see automotive and industrial ecosystem I think they are moving at a much fast pace something we can learn and there my request would be can a tag group form and look at all these parameters and how I think just a data data management and data analysis and then converting of course next uh, you know process could be availability and to of course the AI and ML that could be separate but maybe one one and a half year is spent in trying to organize all this the other part of uh, you know yesterday doctor uh, uh, you know uh, talked about that uh, uh, what is not when you look at something you're going beyond, you look at what is not flexible. And I have argued with many over there, some of these things which are not flexible are the sensors. I, we know that for all our data we need, so how many sensors are required? What would be the cost per acre? I, unless and until we find a solution, I think we cannot apply to, uh, to one acre farm. And that's where I'm thinking that there has to be out of box talking. So sensors are not, and there are many more issues. There are quality issues, there is cost is high, it, it can be damaged, the fields are open and all that. I don't think it's an easy solution for sensors to come, but without a technology intervention, without IoT, I think it, to get a full advantage of what we are talking about, we may not get. And that's where I think there could be a research around, and I've seen in US, one of the research being done is, in, let's say we are talking about 200 acres of a land being monitored by a your, your uh, a drone and, uh, and your you know, imaging technologies like cameras. And we form a zone of something like at one or two places where we have 
uh, uh, you know, a very secure, high quality sensors over there, then and that is a field. And when it is trying to graze uh, the whole map, the, they are also being, uh, you know, taken. And you convert the whole data into a calibration. You know now how, what is the property coming from your, your soil mapping and look at what is the sensors giving. And then you convert the whole thing into a decision mapping, something like this. So you can make the whole inflexible solution as a flexible. Then you can apply as a service to, and when there is 200 and 400 acres we are talking about, I'm sure that cost will be very marginal. Where I do not have a solution today, I think that is the irrigation. Irrigation is still fully dedicated. There's some work happening, of course, people talked about, but I don't think drone is a solution there. It is very dedicated to the field. And that is where that comes is it's a very initial cost. You know how much it is. Anything for a good quality of, of, a, of a drip irrigation with uh, all the uh, AI I think it will be around 50,000 easily per acre. And I don't think a farmer is going to take that kind of a risk to get an advantage over there. And how can we make uh, you know, the solution as, uh, as an advantage? So maybe today I have no solution, but the flexible solution is financing and recovering over a year. But along with that, a monitoring and policy intervention is something which I look for here. On the flexibility, uh, it's very important that when we infuse a technology, and I am sure the technologists are trying to put in any of these value chain. These are the value chain of farming value chain, okay? When we put there, it's very important that the whole thing is made smart or at least being taken care as an integration. The, it provides in my calculation, a huge business to entrepreneur. It can, the value taken. And for an op farmer, it will be multifold and I'll prove some of those over here. So we are talking about integration requirements and that I talked about even in biogas plant. Integration players have huge role in trying to do that. And here is one example I'm trying. So let's say I'm talking about, so I try to make a small mathematical model to tell my voice over here. So let's say, and without the integration being in place, Applying a technology may be another big uh, hurdle we may uh, you know, come across. So I'm taking a case one, let's say we are talking about 100% yield from where it is 100% in all the places of value chain. A case two, that is a practical scenario that happens, there is always some loss, I have taken a number, you can take your numbers, whatever it is. So what comes out is only one sixth of the total what I can get ideally. And if you could talk about a grain farming and, and that, I think what one acre makes between 10 to 20,000 rupees per annum. So this is like that. But if I I put some kind of a technology intervention, which let's say is improving my technology to, uh, to you know, 20% more and somewhere 10% two places I have taken as an example, what I will land with a 0.39. The cost of this technology is not easy to be borne by the farmer. And when he makes 40,000, which is of course doubling the farming income, I, I don't think he's able to make, uh, is it, so for example, uh, your, your uh, you know, uh, drip irrigation, smart drip, drip irrigation, if I want to make, I don't think he's able to take a risk because farming is, of course, a little bit of a risk and he would not like. But if I take about case four, if as an integrator, I'm taking care of, which means my seed is right, my land is prepared right, that is my harvesting is done right, post -harvest. this is a theoretical condition. But I now do a technology intervention at two places. You see, I land with a number which is 32% more. But when I look at with respect to two, which is realistic, it's about seven point what eight times and I did present it earlier and it'll be once this kind of confidence comes I can put get so much of money I'm sure he'll be ready to take off a sort of a money you know he will be participative and this is something which has to be done by entrepreneur this has to be so when the research is being done it should not be only done for an individual but it has to be seen how the whole it falls into the integration of the whole value chain the other last part of this one is Definitely uh, committed administration and, and farm produce organized, though they have not successful, but we have to make them successful because they are the ones who are connecting to the farmer. And it's and there are social reformers. I have taken two examples there. And, and that's where tag to grip can very quickly you know, come out. And I'm attached to one of the WhatsApp group and that's of Mr. K. Sudhakar Rao is from there. He's about 70 acres of land he's doing farming. He's mentoring and leading, uh, you know, he's a 70 years old farmer. But he's giving, but if you look at the type of people, uh, you know, they're sharing the information, I'm surprised. They are sharing their problems, they're sharing their uh, solutions. But I'm saying for TAC group, I think if we can make out how many 
uh, WhatsApp group are active. And I'm sure many of our, we are already part of that WhatsApp group and we can probably collect that information. And th that is where we can connect and create that as a database, which can be available for understanding what is the problem and also giving a solution. And there are very good solutions coming as well. So uh, whatever being talked in some of the webinars I have seen over there, it is being talked over there. Another social reformer, Elango Edranga Swami. So I came in contact when I was in previous in, in, in Chennai and I, he has changed his, uh, you know, his village. We need people like him. So he, this village has become an, an example village for others. And when we are talking about community, he talked about what impressed me and that's what probably I should. We have talked about that when we do same kind of, if we, uh, the complete community grows the same kind of uh, plantation, I think there is a definitely a disadvantage that the prices of the money fall, you know, finally at the market when you go, it falls. Uh, and, and that's true. But what he told me and that which spoke in one of, uh, you know, which, which I did not hear so far is this community for their own existence also need things to be purchased. One, they could not sell it at a right price. So they have lost money. Now we have to purchase that is not available within a community. So they have no negotiation power. So they will be giving, uh, you know, purchasing them. So they are double disbenefited in the whole process. So, so my journey for democratization is making the temporal technologies more simple. We should look at those technologies be simple, which can be, uh, you know, made flexible and can be adopted as farm as a service. That is one. Second is, I think when we talk about apply, even if we apply technologies in one or two, we have to ensure that the whole value chain is properly taken care. Otherwise, these technologies will cost to the farmer. A one acre farmer is not ready to take that kind of a risk. If suppose, for example, uh, a seed is bad, but you have applied agriculture, sorry, irrigation, you know, smart irrigation, his, he will not get a productivity. So those kind of things still exist. So that kind of a confidence a farmer has to have. Again, when an integration group connects or entrepreneur takes the whole responsibility, farmer is very much comfortable because he can get, go to only one person for all the solutions, especially for agri, you know, when it is a, an intelligent solution. Similarly, I talked about the, uh, you know, we need to have, if they are not, and this interesting part was both of these people are not connecting with the agricultural, you know, institutes for finding a solution. And that's where probably tag group should do a sort of a brainstorming, how people like this can be brought into a loop of getting a confidence and will be a helpful in trying to put the technologies in place. And of course, I talked about the, the you know, source data, data collection, cloud services, of course, smartphone and WhatsApp group. So with that, I come, I come include my uh, you know presentation thank you very much for a patient hearing and i would be open for my discussions here thank you thank you rubesh this is an interesting topic uh, there are a few observations from my side uh, duplication per acre is already 50 to 60 thousand for uh, uh, manual one automatic actually available somewhere around two three lakhs four lakhs rupees available but what farmer wants it is automatic within one lakh rupees uh, that's one Gujarat and Baroda, especially when I visited, I saw it. And the women driver, the, the tractor must be, uh, uh, women drivers, women must be able to drive the tractor. I remember 2017, uh, uh, my, my classmate, uh, Jacob Anomaly from ICR, he gave a speech in MTA, uh, Mahindra um, Training Academy with me together. And he was talking about the same problem with ICR as the uh, already predicted. Uh, there'll be very less men will be available in the farm and women must come the tractor but i have not seen till now that is one area very important actually the tractors to be user friendly and i have not seen any any change in tractors frankly speaking for the last 40 years this is what exactly in bhu also i told uh, before two of the biggest tractor manufacturers i told him i didn't see anything much different anyway we'll come back to uh, questions anybody has a question yes uh, please, Azariga, Man Mansur. Yes, yes. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Can hear me. Yeah. Thank you, mighty. Because you talk about drones, so I thought that I should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I have to connect with you sometime. That is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm my philosophy, so. Right. Uh, so nice talking. I think. Um, uh, a few things. Uh, I saw not really question. My observation this. Drone technology, one problem which we I, I, uh, we are facing is that uh, when you go for low-cost drones, 
uh, which will be uh, say all open source and everything assembled by yourself, which will be one third or one fourth of the market price, which farmer can afford in my opinion. But problem is those with open source is very complicated. So uh, we have to make them simple so that farmer can fly and get the things done. I mean, for example, if you go a very, uh, I mean, uh, a, a drone commercial drone, which is the best one is uh, coming from Switzerland, uh, which is EB that pays around $20,000. That is 14 lakhs, it's more than a tractor, I think. So uh, I don't think farmers, uh, a farmer can afford to do that kind of, uh, I mean, techno I mean, that amount of money so uh, this is one uh, bigger problem I think we have to uh, address. Second problem is data processing. I mean, if you go the farmers has to learn remote sensing how to process the data, <laughs> it will be another big problem. That there are some uh, platforms, uh, you upload the data, then you get the product, final products. Then you need to also a little bit knowledge how to interpret that products. And those uh, platforms are still expensive. So for Indian con uh, condition, we have to think about something cheaper solution, maybe a cloud-based plat platform and easy interpretation when you give the data for, I mean, the uh, also analysis, tell farmers. Uh, this is uh, that uh, that is that something that we have to do that on. and i think uh, another thing you mentioned about google earth map and looking at the agriculture i think uh, that is not the right uh, uh, data sets to look at the agriculture but there are uh, uh, some even uh, issue person he can he talk about but this Revisit of satellite of ISRO data is not uh, uh, not uh, sufficient to get the uh, agriculture. Yeah, uh, I understand. Yeah, and also because a lot of cloud cover, you see, during rice time now, a lot of cloud cover, and uh, so you need some satellite or uh, constellation of satellite together, um, ISRO, others, and then. Uh, you can do it. But I think um, I also mentioned that, that there's one good platform, it's called Senti to Agree, where you, this is the developed by European uh, uh, Space Agency, it's free, anybody can download and they, they can have um, installed the whole system in uh, locally and all data are connected automatically. So all the data say in India, whole India, uh, you can monitor every seven days every hectare of land you can monitor yes. you, but you need a hardware so this can and issue data can be plugged into um, google art uh, sentinel data any data can be plugged in there so i think this kind of thing solution already there but only thing is that we have to put our mind we have installed one here in ait we are now monitoring thailand and we are going to monitor myanmar and bhutan uh, every week we'll monitor a hectare level, so per, I mean uh, one hectare probably. So I think this is these are the tools already available. We don't have to build new one. Uh, we have to train our students or faculties or industry whoever they can readily take the advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Manzul. But I think I expect from you when are you going to train us? Okay, <laughs> you're talking about you talk about Bangkok. Uh, Thank you, Manzul. I want you to train. In, no, no, that was no, no. A question. So, my question is always to you, very specific, because Rauri, I've seen so many drones flying. <laughs> I mean, you, you train us. I think I think that we should best. I yeah, think, yeah. So uh, only one I, input to Dr. Hazarika, just one input. So my yes, model please. for, uh, you know, uh, is not the farmer will do it. It is different. And I'll probably I'm not taking a lot of time. Probably I'll talk to you separately. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, just one comment. This uh, drone things is very good for uh, plantation, like tea garden and all, yes. because they can they have a yes. kind of more, uh, you know, I mean, organized. Set. I, yeah. Thank you. I, I w yeah, I want the drones for actually monitoring the uh, government projects, interventions, what they have done. This, this I asked you also, and I want somebody even to give, for example, how much well, how the how they dug up the well or water storage places, what they done for alkaline uh, salinity problem. Uh, we have no way of finding it out. Yeah. I think, no, uh, Dr. Ismail, uh, give me a little time. I'm trying to find that simplify the whole, what I mentioned Thank in you. the beginning. It's a very complex thing. We are Thank trying you. to simplify it. Uh, give me a little time and I'll come back to you. It's a uh, very simple thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Yogender, Yogender Kumar had a question. If I can, just I'll take a couple of minutes more. The questions are there. Professor Yogender Kumar, can you speak?
Okay. Oh, he's not big. He's not picking up. Uh, just uh, anybody else is there? No. Yeah. Uh, or or Atul Mahmud. I think. I, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Hello. Atul. Yeah. Atul. Uh, good. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, my specific question to the Robert, sir. Uh, sir, is there end night for the diesel? We are talking about the um, um, tractor which can be drawn, uh, driven by the uh, women, automation, or uh, electrical machines are introducing in the agriculture. Uh, is we are shifting from diesel to electricity? What your perception for the near future? And one more uh -huh. is, in addition to this one, uh, is there any solution with uh, available with us from where we can supply that uh, power? Maybe the alternative, any one alternative. Particularly yeah, so uh, means of course I'll ask uh, Mr. Keshwan also to respond to this. In my opinion, yeah. the electrical technologies are still very nascent and they are already in struggle for, uh, for automotive. I don't think anything 10 to 15 years, I would say it will come in tractors. You know, that is my opinion. Now anybody can defer that, you know, and the amount of cost, which is associated another, you know, you will have to put, uh, if you want to put it on a tractor, I think another subsidy is something which you'll have to come through, which is already there in automotive. I don't think that's an intent, but there is a solutions. Possibilities are very good. You know, it's not, there are small uh, electrical tractors being uh, developed globally, you know, and, but they have never been becoming as successful as uh, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the diesel. Alternate, uh, yeah, there are alternate energies. Biogas was one of that bio CNG we are talking about. So those possibilities are very high and, and probably we'll work on this. It's really very, very impressive. And I'll support that. And Dr. Barua already is trying to say something. And I would now look at Mr. Keshwan, if what is his opinion about this question, you know? See, uh... You are actually right on the electric tractor because I also feel that by the time the electric tractor comes and which is an affordable tractor is going to take time. But I wanted to actually ask you a very different question. See, when you really look at, if see today we look at a tractor with a drawbar because you turn the entire earth around. Is this the way we are going to do agriculture in the future? Or when you come to precision, do you require so much of power to be really? Yes. Because let's be very honest. You do a small thin cut, and which can be around 8 inches or 10 yes. inches or 12 inches. And you can actually insert one seed and put that area. You can put fertilizer and water. You are not uh, turning the entire earth. Yes. So you don't require a 50 horsepower or 500 horsepower tractor. Because to make that cut, in a, without the moving too much of a Very metal, good. probably require a couple of households. And uh, if you if you have a and so my genuine belief, the entire technology and tractors with the precision is going to be a very different ball game. I'll give you one example why I'm saying this. I don't know how many people of you have heard. See, for forestation, now they have drones, they have a coated seed and they shoot it down. Now, imagine you have equipment which you can shoot a seed into the ground, which is properly protected with nutrients. Your entire drawbar goes, no, yes. it's gone, finished. So now you good don't point. require, good why point. a girl, a, a boy, a small child will be able to operate it. So you're really yeah. talking, see, the period time we start thinking traditionally. And I get a feeling you're seeing, going to see a huge change. I, I'm just yeah. imagining a drone which can carry pelletized seeds and go put, 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 put. Yes. Who knows? Yeah. I, I think Kathleen is right because we still use 70% of our tractors only for transportation. Exactly. <laughs> so that, that has not changed. That has not changed till now. For 40 years, I studied tractors. I don't know. Before so, 40 I, years. so I think... I'll include I think, your point in my, I, you know, in I, my I, I think, Robert, I think, Robesh, what I always telling, I have seen in the field, farmers need a robot for weeding purpose. But the question is whether we, we require or not, that comes when you have to ask uh, Dr. Sidhu, he says not required if we give water and everything under, underground. So there are, there are questions. Only I think robots probably, according to me, should be able to come. Like what the case one told also, a few horsepower should be able to go under the job. Sir, we call it I'm 100% with you on uh, the biggest potential for a small 
automated, even a solar powered uh, robot for okay. weeding is, I mean, is huge. And anybody can get it onto the market for around 25, 30,000 rupees. You can believe that that fellow is going to become a billionaire. Yes. I, I, really, actually, people don't want to do ra Roundup and all. They don't want to use any more, uh, uh, what do you call the, the, the uh, herbicides. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, the, I for, totally for example, with you on this. Don't want, yeah. And today there are robots, uh, which is, uh, the, there are actually mechanical ones which work. Today yeah. you also have things which can shoot a laser and kill a weed. Yes. yes. So there is so much of technology coming. That's why I'm saying it. See, my genuine belief is five years down the road, how the agricultural farm power is going to be. I'm finding it extremely difficult to predict. See, like the EVs has killed the regular automotive. You may find a yes. drastic change happening in other areas yes. also. Yes. So let's wait and see. Okay, okay sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I, you. I would ask Dr. Indramani. We had a thank good you. discussion. Thank Very good. Excellent discussion. It was uh, wonderful discussion. Uh, Gajan Singh, uh, Gajan Singh, Gajan Singh mm -hmm. can conclude. Then Indramani will come. No, okay. Dr. Uh, Indramani. Excellent thank presentations you. and very good discussion follow-up. I think thank you. Thank we you. have a lot of work to do now as a follow-up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank thank you. Yes. So thank, thank you very you, much. Sir. Thank you very much, Kesha Saab and Rubesh Ji. Sir, I look at the Gajendra Singh Saab as more like a mentor for me. I mean, he's one of the reasons I got into some of the things today I'm talking. I used to very closely follow up with him, even without his knowledge. Let me put it thank that you. way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think, you. see, there are some people we always look at and say, hey, there is somebody people have done and can we do something about it? Yes. He's one of those persons. Yes. I have a lot of regard for him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keswan. Uh, Professor Singh is always with us. He is uh, joining this webinar series one and two continuously, consistently from New York. So, ah. yeah, from New York. So, that is that is the level of uh, commitment. Who, who is in New York? I am in New yeah. York. Yeah. Oh, you are in New York now? Yeah. 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 <laughs> power, power of IT. Power of IT. From uh, last two been... months, from last two months, he is present with us and guiding us. So great, thank you, great, Professor Singh. Great, great, uh, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Keswan, and thank you, Robes, for doing this great metamorphism. And that's how thank Mr. You. Keswan make this uh, webinar series different. We are not just listening and uh, you know, and uh, going back because we are doing a lot of exercise. This group and that's how the tag group is made. And uh, we request you to join tag group and. Uh, yeah. So that so that we keep on getting advice from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thanks thank a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.